TJ the Amazing Atheist has decided to take on the subject of liberalism. Well, I have a few problems with his take on it. Let's see what he has to say. Much ado has been made as of late about how I have changed over the course of the last few years. In light of this fact, I have decided to do a small series of videos wherein I express my current attitudes towards various subjects that I have addressed in the past. Today, we will talk about liberalism. Now, let me be clear. I have absolutely no problem with someone changing their views as time goes on, as they get new information. That's fine. I've changed my views many times. I've sometimes went back and forth on a number of issues. I, I believe one way at one time, then I change, and then I end up changing back. You know, TJ has had many views on these subjects as time has went on. And I understand that his video, he's specifically saying, hey, this is just how he feels right now. This is his current take on it. And that might change in the future. And I appreciate that about TJ. So I just want to make that clear real quick. I've never read a definition of liberalism that satisfied me. Uh, to clarify, I've never read a definition that truly cut to the heart of what American liberalism is in the 21st century. The best definition I can summon up with any brevity is that liberals are people who believe in liberty and egalitarianism in the abstract, but are unwilling to undertake or advocate for the sweeping systemic change needed to bring those enlightenment values closer to fruition. Now let's make it clear what enlightenment values are. The enlightenment a philosophical movement that dominated in Europe during the 18th century was centered around the idea that reason is the primary source of authority and legitimacy and advocated such ideals as liberty, progress, tolerance, fraternity, constitutional government, and separation of church and state. A liberal in 2020 is someone who, if told of the horrors of capitalistic exploitation, uh, of workers and consumers alike, will propose a series of toothless half-measures designed to make modest improvements to the system, but ultimately, their top concern is not overturning the apple cart. Well, depending on your perspective, a lot of things could fit into that category. You know, I believe in a lot of heavy regulations on businesses, a lot of heavy regulations on capitalism, but I don't believe in abandoning capitalism, nor do I believe in abandoning the meritocracy. To some people, that means that I believe in toothless legislation and that I don't believe in overturning the apple cart. Well, it's true, I don't believe in throwing the baby out with the bathwater. I believe in trying to work with what we have as much as possible, as much as possible. I mean, if, if it can be proven that there's no way to regulate it any more than we already have, and we still need to make changes, then, you know, maybe. But I don't think we're at that point yet. Liberals want it both ways. They look for ways to improve conditions for human beings marginally and incrementally, but only within the context of the current system. They will not call for radical new approaches. They will not call for sweeping systemic change. I don't really see anyone pushing for new approaches. I see most people pushing for things that are doomed to fail. They've been proven to fail. They will not fundamentally change government, economic, or social systems in America. I'll push for change, but only if it's something that hasn't been proven to fail. In short, liberals are those who will admit to many of America's problems, but they have taken a, sw a huge swath of the solutions to those problems off the table. Well, I think we can all pretty much agree that fascism should be off the table. I mean, I'm sure there are some people who are pro-fascist who could try to give some rational reasons why we should consider fascism, but most of us are going to say, uh, no, no to fascism, right? I think most people would want communism off the table, though there's a growing trend of people who are trying to claim that communism isn't really that bad. Some people claiming that dictionary socialism isn't really that bad, regardless of if it has a terrible history. There are people like Kamala Harris 
who are pushing for an equality of outcome kind of model like this. So there's a big difference between equality and equity. Equality suggests, oh, everyone should get the same amount. The problem with that, not everybody's starting out from the same place. So if we're all getting the same amount, but you started out back there and I started out over here, we could get the same amount, but you're still gonna be that far back behind me. It's about giving people the resources and the support they need so that everyone can be on equal footing and then compete on equal footing. Equitable treatment means we all end up at the same place. You know, if we were basing it on people's individual situations, sure. Give people the help that they need, but don't base it off of someone's racial or sexual or sexual orientation type of demographic. I just don't think that's a good way to go about things. I think that should be off the table. If we were all locked in a prison together, the conservatives would be the ones saying that the prison is actually a paradise. Uh, the leftists would be the ones saying we need to rise up take out the guards, take out the warden, and break free. The liberals would be the ones trying to improve conditions within the prison without upsetting the warden. Uh, the fundamental nature of a liberal is, uh, to my way of thinking, cowardice. Cowardice, huh? Let's go back to the definition of the Enlightenment. Aren't we supposed to be using our reasoning skills? If we can see that going down a certain road has a negative end, we shouldn't want to try to go down that road. That isn't cowardice. To leftists, they may be occasionally useful as allies in a limited capacity here and there, contingent upon material conditions on the ground and so on and so forth, but until they let go of their capitulatory tendencies and embrace more radical ideas, they're not of tremendous long-term use. When push comes to, sh uh, to shove, they will side with conservatives over leftists. Conservatives and liberals both have as their primary interest the preservation of the status quo. Now, I know for myself, I don't want to just see the continuation of the status quo. I do want there to be significant change, but I want it to be change that looks like it's going to work. I want it to be change that seems reasonable. I want it to be change that's good. I mean, change for the sake of change is crap. There are two important things that I want you to take note of here. One... When I talk about liberalism, I'm talking primarily of the liberal voters. I suppose, but does that make a huge difference? I am not talking about democratic politicians who have mostly shifted right into the laissez-faire free market philosophy of neoliberalism. I hear a lot of talk about how politicians have apparently moved to the right, and I'm just like, well... I don't see them as moving towards the right. I see them as not moving much towards the left. Now, I mean, if, if in order to not be considered moving to the right, you have to continually move more to the left, I, I don't really know what to say. I wouldn't consider the politicians of today to be any more to the right than politicians were in the 1990s. So... I, I mean, I see us having moved a bit to the left since the 1990s. Now, maybe if they don't move to the left fast enough, they'll be considered moving to the right? I don't know. It's just weird to me. That currently dominates both parties. Any vestiges of actual liberalism left in the Democratic Party at this point are, in my opinion, only used to drum up votes. Well, what definition of liberalism are you using at this point in your video now? I mean, if you're saying that the only reason why these politicians are pushing it is to get votes, but you're saying that liberalism as it applies to America is when people want to push for toothless legislation that doesn't really do anything, what are you saying that the Democrat politicians are pushing now? I mean, you've suggested that 
everyone's kind of moved to the right. And I'm saying, well, I mean, Kamala has just shown that she wants to push for equality of outcome. It, what do you mean? I mean, Democrats and Republicans obviously have very different ideas when it comes to social issues. And they have different ideas when it comes to the economy as well. The right wing believes in cutting taxes and cutting government programs. And the left believes, or the Democrats, I should say, believe in having more government programs and having higher taxes. So I'm just not sure what you mean here. Two, there is no hard line between liberalism and leftism. Look at politicians like Bernie Sanders or Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. They are to the left of liberal Democrats, espousing more of a social democracy notion of how society should be run. You could look at this as being a more radical form of liberalism, or you could look at it as a weak form of leftism or socialism. Well, when it comes to liberalism, that seems to clash with your view of liberalism. I mean, what radical liberalism? What, is, what does that mean in contrast to the way that you've defined it earlier in this video? I mean, you define it as cowardice. Uh, neither impression, to my reckoning, would be wrong, per se, just different ways of looking at the same thing. You could even say that both of those are true. There is a gradient there. It's not a rigid binary, so that's important to keep in mind. Fair enough, but earlier in the video, you seem to be drawing lines in the sand. Uh, now, I ask that if you disagree with anything I've said here, to just please remember that the purpose of these videos is to express my current attitudes towards various subjects that pertain to this channel. I am not attempting at this time to make an argument. I am merely communicating to you my current attitude on this subject. Well, couldn't it be said that that's what anyone is doing when they're making an argument? Regardless of how you felt about my words, I thank you kindly for taking the time to hear them. And I appreciate you expressing them. I also appreciate your open-mindedness and the fact that you're introspective enough that you're willing to question your past views on things, especially publicly. Not many people are willing to do that. So I appreciate you, TJ, I do.